feel like I should be singing We Are the Champions or something. Go for it. Is that it? That's the series wrap? That's the series wrap. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. We made it. 130 episodes later, the finale of my bag collection series is upon us. Uh, part two of my Louis Vuitton collection. So before we get into it, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank all of you who watched and supported the series. It was something since the beginning I was so apprehensive. I honestly did not want to do, but it's been so lovely to meet so many people with similar interests and find the things that I find fascinating, fascinating, and to be able to bond over them and connect has been really, really special. Uh, YouTube is a crazy place, uh, but I really appreciate you guys coming in with warm hearts and your kindness on your sleeve and made this a really welcoming environment for me. Also for seeing um, more than just stuff. I feel like a lot of the time, especially luxury bags or any luxury purchases are just kind of seen as like a status symbol thing. But the fact that so many of you guys came along to my little journey to hear a little bit about where heritage of all of these brands comes from and why these pieces are so special and the craftsmanship is so special and the history behind it is so special and what it's rooted in. I think it's been really, really nice to see that though these are all materialistic possessions, they represent so much more than that. And um, for you guys to understand why I am completely insane <laughs> and crazy to collect so many of them has been really nice. So yeah, uh, thank you again. And without further ado, for the last time, uh, time to show you guys the last little pieces from my Louis Vuitton collection. The video you have requested for the longest time ever. Thank you for your patience. All right, so in part one, we talked all about the history. We went over the luggage pieces, the Marc Jacobs era, all of the artist collaborations. Now this time it's all about Nicolas Gersquier. By the way, still so hard to say with that smooth J, but that is the correct way to say it apparently. So let's get cracking again. A couple of these I don't know the name of, but if you do and I don't say them correctly, please put them down in the comment box below. So last time we also started with my first bag. How about we start today with my most recent bag from Louis Vuitton from uh, their most recent cruise collection, Game On this little vanity case. Now let me tell you, this collection, it spoke to me. It's rare that I will invest in their more um, time-stamped pieces. Again, they are great for collecting, but I feel like when it comes to wearability, a lot of the time they feel passe before they feel cool again, which I think is just kind of sad because you don't reach for them as much as you would, even though you appreciate them and you love them. Bags should be worn out and not just in your closet, which is hilarious coming from me. But this collection was one that I really, really loved and that resonated with me. And when that happens, I tend to like to invest and a little piece from it. So this is the little vanity case. This new take on the traditional monogram was not one I uh, could ignore. Look at this little detail too on the cloche. Oof. Uh, also, this is a really popular bag that I never got myself. I do appreciate it. I did love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. The leather strap, the leather handle is gorgeous. The hardware is so shiny. I love this take on the hardware strap as well. The little hoops with the leather intertwined is so, so gorgeous. Uh, and I find that it's a great size also for an everyday bag. It's meant to be a vanity, of course, but it's absolutely adorable. This monogram is really, really special. It feels like a little piece of history and it represents me pretty well. Also, there was other bags that I liked, but the, the a lot of them had a lot more card inspiration, which is the basis for the collection, but I just liked the hearts. So I'm happy that I was able to get my hands on a piece that kind of highlighted that part only. Speaking of highly personal bags, one that you've seen before on my channel, Eve loves it. My little personalized Anya Hinmarch patch bag. This isn't a bag they make anymore. It was for a specific collection. I found the name of this bag for one of you guys before who was looking for it online. I don't remember it anymore. If you do know it, stick it down in the comment box below. A huge trend that happened, I don't know, in 2015, 16, Anya Hinmarch is, I believe she's a British designer, correct me if I'm wrong. And she has a lot of her own little bags, uh, accessories, but then she came out with these patches and people went wild for them. They put them on Birkins, on Kelly's. I didn't have the heart to do that. Uh, we were in New York for Fashion Week a few years back and we went to the store and I picked out the patches, didn't know where I would put them necessarily. And then we went to the Standard Grill, I got a little drunk, remembered that I saw this bag at Louis Vuitton and I took an Uber, went back, got it. And the rest as they say is history. All of my good stories are about me drinking too much at lunch and getting something. I feel like this is a pattern, like not a good one. <laughs> that being said, I am quite happy with the way it turned out. Originally, I only had uh, my initials, but then I went back and did my full name. And then throughout the year, I got a couple more patches to collect. And it's honestly so, so stressful to put them on because I didn't want to wreck this gorgeous, gorgeous bag, though I do believe that um, the glue would come come off rather easily if I wanted the bag to look like this all the way around. Uh, but yeah, I added Tony the Tiger and the Mickey Mouse hand, the smiley face, the little Band-Aid and uh, the star 
and a heart rainbow little patches. I really, really love it. It's a unique bag. It's very, very special when you get to put your, your moniker on something and make something so your own uh, that it's unique in the world. It's just cool. Also, I love that I have a bag this color because I feel like now it's not a color I would reach for, like for a purchase as much, but I'm happy that I have something in my collection that has this gorgeous gorgeous blue. All right, where do we go next? I don't know, let's do this. Speaking of recent collections, the Escal collection was another one recently. The only other one recently, honestly, that really, 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 really spoke to me. I mean, when this came out, I was on the website and I was like, do you really need it? No, like you're at home, it's a pandemic, just don't. And they all slowly started selling out, especially in this colorway. The Speedy was gone, the Noe was gone, and then I saw like it, I felt like it was out of my reach and I was a little bit heartbroken for a second. Uh, but then, you know, I am a rational human being. I knew it wasn't something I necessarily needed, uh, but I carried that flame, that torch in my heart for especially this colorway. And then this summer I was shopping for my mom. She wanted a travel bag for all the travel she's been doing lately. I know, hilarious. And I got her this one and she's like, oh, it's too young for me. I don't like it. Can you return it? Cause we're buying online. And I'm like, sure, I could return it. And then I never did. And now uh, she's mine. Don't worry, my mom has since found her perfect travel bag, but this became mine. I had a hard time picking the color even for her. The raspberry tone was really pretty. The blue is super wearable, but this uh, little pastel moment, if you know anything about me, was something I needed to have in my closet. Also the on the go was a bag I really, really wanted to get my hands on ever since it was released. It's a really practical bag. Similarly to the Dior book tote, it's easy to travel with, but it has these extra straps that you could put over your shoulders, which the book tote does not have. It's a really convenient shape, especially if you have any like laptop equipment, things like that. It's just a great bag. I highly recommend the on the go. It's a, it's a good one and it's so pretty. All right, one other funky collection and then we go to the recent classics. This is, I believe it's called the infrared monogram in the pochette Mitsus. It is my only pochette Mitsus, even though it is a bag I absolutely love. We talked about how it was the last bag that Marc Jacobs introduced to Louis Vuitton before his departure in 2013, I believe. My mom got her hands on the reverse monogram one and I thought it was absolutely beautiful. I wore it for a long time, actually. I borrowed it, you know. <laughs> this came out around the same time as the Palm Spring backpack, I believe. Black and red, one of my favorite color combinations or colors I wear often, not necessarily together but it's just a color story I'm drawn to so when this was released I was really tempted to get the Palm Springs backpack in it finally went with the traditional colorway which we'll go over in a second but it always broke my heart when these uh, were no longer in store that I never got a piece from the infrared collection and then uh, years later I bought it pre-loved from Kardashian closet this is Kris Jenner's bag everyone <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me I was on the website just out of curiosity I think someone had mentioned it to me so I was looking through their selection there was, there was a lot of stuff on there but I didn't intend on really buying any of it and then I saw that Miss Kris Jenner was selling her infrared pochette mitsus and I was like what I love that bag I love that monogram why would she be selling it and then I was like do I is this do I want it what and then I went online did comparables on the real real on eBay and her price point was actually pretty reasonable uh, so yeah that's my story that's how I got uh, my pochette mitsus infrared from Kris Jenner uh, it's a great bag I wore it a lot throughout the holiday especially around the holidays when I wear a lot of red because I'm feeling festive it's got a great crossbody strap often when you guys ask me which bag you should invest in from Louis I will say say a pochette mitsis because I feel like it's still, though it had a very, very trendy moment in the earlier 2010s, I feel like it is such a classic écolier looking bag. It's really, really practical as well. And I just think it's a classic. It stands the test of time. There's a there's a very big community of people that are very trendy when it comes to Louis Vuitton. I guess I'm not part of them. I'm still wearing the ones that I love the most. Anyways, love this guy. Thanks, Kris Jenner. But why not do this? I was talking about it this whole time, right? The Palm Spring backpack. Uh, this is probably my most worn bag in my entire collection. I know, crazy, right? This is a bag I find that is incredibly resilient, incredibly practical. It fits a ton. I know the mini backpack trend has come and gone, but I highly recommend this bag to this day. I would probably get the larger size now, but this is such a cutie uh, for concerts, for music festivals. You could put a little charm here as well, which I love. I really like that it's the black leather uh, rather than the tan leather that is paired with it because I have a lot of black and monogram shoes that I enjoy doing like a matchy matchy moment with. It's just a great bag. I've loved it. It will never leave my collection. I just think it's so flip and cute. It's like baby Nikes or baby Uggs. Like you can't not look at this and think it's adorable, no? So speaking of tiny things, why don't we delve into my obsession? Recently, all of my Louis Vuitton purchases feel like they have a bit of a common theme. They are tiny. <laughs> I don't know, I have kind of an obsession with Louis Vuitton luggage in general. So the fact that they released a lot of personal everyday bags with similar sort of aesthetics or themes uh, really spoke to me. It started, of course, with the minimal. Look at how beautiful this bag is. Um, this was a very big gift from my mother. I remember the day I got it, I was kind of like, are you sure? Like, this is a big present. And it is 
probably one of my very favorite bags in my entire collection because it is so timeless. It's such a great representation of Louis Vuitton as a brand as well and of their history and of their craftsmanship. Is it the most practical bag? I don't know, I think it's pretty great. I've worn it a lot throughout the years. It's a great travel bag as well. If you need like an evening clutch or an everyday bag, I think this makes a statement, it packs a punch. And it's just a classic. They've released it in a hundred different models since then, but I'm happy that this is one of the first iterations. They also came out with it in this first collection with the blue, but I think the black is classic. And I love the little birds, the little X's. And then recently at Christmas, not this Christmas, last Christmas, my mother surprised me with the baby. Uh, these sit like this in my closet. Uh, this is definitely not as practical as the other one. If the other one wasn't practical, this one is really not practical. But boy oh boy is it adorable. I think we have Jacques Mousse to thank for this tiny bag obsession. But if of all tiny bags that I've invested in, I think this must be my favorite. That well, was a gift, but still. It's just such a cutie pie. It's got a crossbody strap that's gold. I've worn it only a few times, but when I do, I feel like there's a special glow about me. So yeah, mommy and the baby, love them. Continuing on the theme of miniature versions of Louis Vuitton uh, statement luggage pieces, we have the Petite Bois de Chapeau. This was released a few years ago, kind of in the same vein as the Petite Mal. This is the hard one. They didn't make the soup when I first got my hands on this. And when they released this, I was like, yep, yeah, I'm getting that. I love that. The soup is actually really, really cute. My mom has it in the light demi print and it's really Really, really practical. I love that this one's made of wood. It just reminds me of the history of the brand. Doesn't fit a ton, but it definitely packs a punch. And it's just such a little beauty. It's, it's got a cross body strap as well. And we love her. Okay, in the comment box below, if you could have one, which one would you do? This or this? This, right? I don't know. I love them both. I'd go back and forth. All right, third tiny luggage bag. <laughs> So this bag was also featured on my channel last year as the bags I wear the least. This was a quick gap for me again. It was a bag that when it was released, I was like, yes, 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 I am buying you. I love you, you are my favorite. Unfortunately, did not get a ton of wear out of it. It is not the most practical bag to get in and out of. Also, it's kind of a, on the larger size of small bags and on the smaller size of large bags. So I feel like it's a it's like a sweet spot in there that you have to find an occasion for it. But I did bring it when we went to France last year or two years ago now and absolutely loved wearing it. Uh, also, I feel like it's a collector's piece to me. Me. It's something that's going to stay in my closet forever and I will gladly pass down to my future little boy or little girl. Hopefully he or she will love bags because <laughs> I've said that a lot throughout this series. And uh, they released it in a smaller size, which I think I would have actually preferred, but at the time they only had this. So I'm still, I'm still quite in love with it. I love the little top, uh, top handle. I think it's just so retro and adorable. Really, really cute. And now my last tiny bag, this little petit sac plat. This was another recent sort of trend bag for Louis Vuitton. I think all I'm missing is a little the tiny hat box and the little tiny Noé and I've got a full set of baseball cards here. Uh, I love this little guy. Crossbody, so practical. It reminds me of uh, Chanel's SLGs that are just meant for your phone because you just pop your, like as someone who lives like this most of the time, I mean, we're not in a global pandemic and I'm out of the house, I live like this. So to have my phone this accessible, is honestly really, really nice. Also, the price point was great. Again, it's all relative, but I feel like it packs a punch for the amount of cuteness and trendiness that it does bring forth. And it's another classic Louis Vuitton bag reinvented in a fun new way, and I'm always drawn to that. Also, tiny things. Come on, tiny things are so cute. So one bag I don't have here with me today, thanks to the global pandemic, is a pre-love bag I purchased recently from the Marc Jacobs era. It was Yayo Kusama, Yayoi? Yayoi Kusama, I think is how you pronounce it. Back in the day, I was, I remember it was my 21st birthday, and they had just released the collection with these iconic big polka dots and kind of the, the cuir vernis, like the shiny finish of their bags. And I got my hands on the little pochette uh, because we were heading to Walt Disney World for my 21st birthday and it reminded me of Minnie Mouse. Fortunately, I returned it because I wanted something that felt more utilitarian and I picked up a little Celine Nano in the red, but I always regretted returning it because I felt like it was such a moment in history. So recently when I found one of the bigger sizes from that collection with that same iconic white polka dot on a red background finish, I picked it up. It was a great price point. It's living in Miami right now waiting for my next trip to Walt Disney World so hopefully that'll happen soon. I'll put a photo of it right here. But yeah that was another great collaboration bag that I didn't have the chance to feature in last week's video. And finally the last bag for the bag collection series is the Louis Vuitton uh, can bag. Another, it kind of fits in that same sort of small bag family, if you ask me. This is in the epi leather finish. This was a kind of a vintage style that they reissued three, four years ago now already, which is crazy because I've worn this one a ton. I put a little twilly on it um, with the monogram to make her a little extra fun. I never owned anything else in the epi leather, so this feels like a very, very special bag. I purchased it in Capri on the last day of our vacation over there, and uh, I absolutely love it. I love a black bag with silver hardware. I find that they are always super, super easy to style, especially during the cooler months. Great little crossbody moment. When you open her, she kind of pops right open. So you always gotta be a little careful, but it definitely feels like a cool twist on a classic bag. 
and a perfect bag to end this series on, I guess. And that's a wrap. That's it. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. It's been a ton of fun. Where do we go from here? You tell me in the comment box below. I would love to hear what you'd love to see next. To be honest, since we started the bag collection series, we have quite a few friends that have joined us. So much so that some of you suggested that we do another, another go around. Uh, let me know if that's of interest to you. Maybe we take a little break, but if that's something you guys would love to see, I would love to film it for you. And until the next time, I wanna thank you guys for joining me on this epic adventure. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you saw today. There's much more of it coming. I give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the series and I will see you guys uh, in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.